What is up, YouTube? Welcome to the show where we bring together all of the latest and greatest gaming news stories from across the interwebs. I am your host, Jericho426, and you are watching This Week in Gaming. As almost everyone knows, and if you don't know, get in the know, E3, the Electronics Entertainment Expo, is occurring right now. It is happening right now and is going on all week long. We are getting the biggest releases and trailers and hints, exclusives, shots, everything we need to know about the next several years of gaming, whether it is on PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, or PC, even mobile devices, guys. E3 is happening right now, and I cannot be more excited. I wait for this every single year, guys. And today, guys, we are going to be taking a look at the biggest stories coming out of the Bethesda and Microsoft Studios gaming conference. They had some really big announcements this year, guys, some really awesome trailers, and we are going to be discussing the biggest ones that, well, that I was interested in. I'm not going to cover everything on here because, let's face it, I love games. I love all kinds of games, but I don't love all games. And you don't love all games either, so you might like what I don't like, and I might like what you don't like. But on this channel, I'm going to give you what I do like and what I think was really awesome. Of course, the first and biggest announcement coming from Bethesda was the official release date for Starfield, guys. This game has been rumored for a long time, and according to Bethesda, they have been working on at least the concept and idea of this game for around 25 years now. But they haven't had the technology to really implement their full idea and strategy into designing the game. But finally, guys, with the power of the Xbox Series X, they are able to fulfill their dreams of creating Starfield and bringing it to everyone. Now, the official release date is very similar uh, to the Skyrim release date, if you remember when that happened, is 11-11, this time 2022. So November 11th, 2022, guys, we still got a while to wait, about a year and a half, but I am so excited for this game. Uh, the, the gameplay in the background looks amazing. Of course, all this is just cutscene. We haven't seen any gameplay, but obviously everything on the Xbox Series X looks fantastic, so I have no doubt the game is going to look amazing. And if it's anything to go by their previous games with Fallout and the Skyrim, or I should say the Elder Scrolls series, uh, it's probably going to play very, very in-depth, a very good RPG system. Uh, I'm just, I'm super excited for Starfield, guys. Starfield is going to be a 100% exclusive title to the Xbox, and you will be able to play this game on the Xbox Game Pass the day that it releases. Up next is a game that I have been eagerly awaiting for a very long time. It is the spiritual third part successor to the famous Left 4 Dead series, the first person shooter zombie horde mode series that was brought to us by Valve. This is of course Back for Blood. If it is even possible guys, Back for Blood seems more outrageous and just more ridiculous than the entire Left 4 Dead series put together. We are still looking at our four player co-op team. Of course you can go into the game solo but it's much more fun to play with friends and we now have an official release date for October 12th 2021 and boy can that day not get here soon enough not only does this game have a cooperative story mode that is just insane to play like the other left for dead games but it also includes uh pvp modes and swarm mode kind of like its own horde mode as well even modes where you can play the zombies and some of the elite zombies themselves back for blood will not be an xbox exclusive however it will be available on the xbox game pass absolutely one of the most fun announcements coming out of e3 is that the game Sea of Thieves, which I haven't played in a very long time. I used to play it a lot when it was in its very early stages and it was still kind of empty of content, but they have really done a great job of filling in the world. But the big announcement is on June 22nd, so very soon this month, we are going to get an expansion, a DLC called A Pirate's Life, where we will be introduced to none other than the greatest pirate of the seas, Jack Sparrow. A Pirate's Life DLC is going to have an all new story campaign with all new characters to interact with, uh, all new items to collect, all new treasures in the game, and a new random event in the game, The Flying Dutchman. Yes, Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean 2 and 3, the biggest villain in the Pirate series, is coming to Sea of Thieves to torment all the pirates and all those would-be treasure hunters. As someone who hasn't played Sea of Thieves in quite a while, I'm actually really excited about this DLC, and if I can find the time, I'm absolutely gonna pull this game back out and really jump into the high seas. I would love to grab some of my friends, uh, pilot a ship again, and just go across the seas and encounter 
uh, Davy Jones himself. I think that's going to be such a fantastic thing. And I would I would care to wager that we are going to see even more of the Kraken now that Davy Jones is making his appearance. Once again, Jack Sparrow will be sailing into Sea of Thieves in a Pirate's Life DLC on June 22nd. So only about a week and a half left, guys. This is going to be awesome. Perhaps the biggest news story of the day was for Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite was supposed to come out last June. And instead, Halo Infinite got pushed back, and we did not know when. But now we know, guys, it is going to be holiday season of this year, holiday 2021. Halo Infinite will be out, and it will be running in 120 FPS, guys. It's going to be fantastic, and it's going to look wonderful. The campaign will feature the Zeta Ring, which is the largest open world free to explore space so far in the entire Halo franchise. Cortana is missing. She is gone. Supposedly, if you watch the trailer, she has been deleted and there is a new AI who they have not named yet that will be replacing her inside the Master Chief's head. As well, there seems to be another partner, another man uh, that will be partnering with the Master Chief throughout the storyline. In addition, the Master Chief does have an all new arsenal and some new tricks up his sleeve with this new grappling gun, a very Batman-esque feel to it. Uh, this thing looks freaking amazing. Uh, there's things that you're seeing in the gameplay trailer behind us. Uh, the multi-gameplay is what you're seeing where he uses it to not only uh, grab weapons but also to hijack other vehicles from other players, guys. The multiplayer looks phenomenal. It looks just as much fun as Halo ever did. And even though we haven't had any announcements about the Battle Royale mode that was long time rumored for the new Halo Infinite game, it doesn't mean that this multiplayer does not look absolutely phenomenal and it will probably be a very big competitor for Call of Duty Warzone to have to come up against. Speaking of competitors to Warzone, guys, DICE just released the first gigantic trailer for their new Battlefield 2042, guys. This will support up to 128 players and oh my goodness, does the gameplay look just crazy, phenomenal, just just. It, it kind of just blows your mind, guys. It has a very, obviously, kind of a war zone feel to it with the modern day weapons. However, you will see there is much more verticality in Battlefield 2042 as there has always been. There is a lot of high flying action, a lot of planes, a lot of helicopters, a lot of parachuting, and the brand new wingsuit that is going to be entering the game, allowing you to be able to traverse the entire map without having to use something like a plane or a helicopter. If you are looking at the background gameplay here, you will see there are a lot of crazy maneuvers that you can pull off as there has always been in past Battlefield games, jumping out of planes, shooting rocket launchers, hijacking people's air support, all kinds of crazy things. And guys as well, there are going to be brand new elements brought into the multiplayer. Things like sandstorms, like weather elements that are not only there to just change the appearance of the game, but to also affect how you play when you are in the air. Since so many people and so much of the gameplay can take place in the air, you can get caught up in a sandstorm and it's going to blow you way off course. Things are not going to be just so cut and dry like we have seen in other Battle Royale games and in other multiplayer guys. The environment is really going to affect your gameplay in this. And I think that we were just going to see so many crazy plays, so many highlight reels when this game comes out. And by the way, it is slated to come out this year on October 22nd. Guys, I think this is going to be the biggest competitor to Warzone to date. And this is going to be a freaking phenomenal game, guys. And I cannot wait to play Battlefield 2042. Guys, obviously, with all the things that Bethesda and Microsoft talked about today in their conference, we did not cover everything that they had to say. So, guys, I am going to leave the link to the main video in the description, guys. Go and check it out for yourself and see what all they have highlighted for us for the next year to two years to come, guys. I think it's going to be fantastic. The next two years are going to be just a crazy time in gaming from Starfield to Halo to Battlefield. And even they did mention that little teaser, that little blurb, Elder Scrolls 6, which is a game title that we've all been waiting for, me especially, guys. So if you do want to t stay up to date on all the content coming out this week with PlayStation, Nintendo, and even mobile gaming, make sure you subscribe to the channel, guys. I'm going to have a lot more E3 coverage coming up, as well as gaming news from around the world in the coming weeks, guys. So I appreciate you stopping by. Make sure you like the video for me, and I will catch you on the flip side.